Good morning. Welcome to Southeast Valley Bible Church and our digital service. We're glad that you've joined us. Let's begin by setting our hearts on the scriptures. Psalm 65, uh, the, the beautiful description about the power of God. And, and this is what the psalmist says in verse 6. The one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples. And there's this beautiful fulfillment of what the Lord Jesus does, uh, Lord Jesus Christ does in his earthly ministry as the, the full, perfect Son of God, the divine Son, uh, exercising perfect control over the wind and the waves. And it, and it shows us that God is completely powerful. He's completely sovereign. He's completely in control. And as a result, we, his people, can trust him. We can trust him with our lives. We can trust him uh, with our songs. And so our, our music today is going to be oriented around the power of God and our uh, ability to trust in God who sustains all things. So let's begin our service singing, I Sing the Mighty Power of God, a hymn written by Isaac Watts. I Sing the Mighty Power of God. So hey, it's exciting to be together, and I uh, just wanted to just challenge us and remind us of a couple of things. In this exciting season, as we've uh, seen God work in the COVID season, and we've all been at home, we're excited about now being able to begin the transition to what we might call normal, although I'm not sure God wants us to be normal. I think God wants us to learn some things, but we are looking forward to getting back to kind of as church as we remember. But I just want to make a notation, and I want to prepare all of us that the next uh, two, three, four weeks, however long this transition period is, as we begin starting next week of getting back to our small groups next Sunday, being in the Lord's house together. Uh, and so as we begin to do that, just to remind us of a couple of things. Number one, uh, worship and music is not going to be exactly the same. At first, uh, because of transition, we're not going to be having Fellowship Cafe we're going to be having Sunday school, 945, uh, 45 minutes of teaching Pastor Jesse or Pastor Jeremy 
is going to be teaching on how to Bible. And then we'll be having a service start at 1045. Uh, for the next little while, we're not going to have Fellowship Cafe. And for the first at least couple of weeks, we're not going to have Children's Church or Children's Sunday School. We'll just let families sit together. And so because of all of that, we, we recognize some of you may not be able to make it because you're not quite ready to leave the house and some of you have some health issues or you've got family issues that would mitigate your being able to come. And that would not be a wise thing for you to do because of various scenarios that you're living with. So please understand, uh, if you decide to come, we're happy to have you. If, if you decide to stay, uh, we're going to be providing live stream for both Sunday school and morning worship. We're going to be giving everybody instruction on how to be able to access that. It should not be difficult, and so we're looking forward to that. You'll help us by remembering that some people will be wearing masks, others will not. And, uh, and so it's not a place for you or for me to judge. We lovingly understand that different people are at different places, and so that's good. And uh, we want to encourage that. Those of you that are planning on being with us, you will be a big help to us if you'll actually sign. We're going to give you information on how you can sign online to let us know that you're coming for Sunday school or morning service. Uh, for us to have a, an approximate head count is going to be important because one of the changes you're going to see is uh, some more space than what you're used to in between rows. Uh, as families come in, we'll ask families to sit together separated by a couple of empty seats and then another family can sit and we're going to be spaced throughout the auditorium and so it's going to really be a help to us if you'll let us now know and so we'll let you know how you can let us know but just know church family we're praying for you we're excited about this next phase and we are trusting the lord that he is doing all things well and uh, and so praise god together let's trust him together uh, those of you that can make it we're excited to have you those of you that will not be making it, uh, we're going to miss you, but we'll understand. I do want to just say this. Um, I want you to remember that uh, there is a, a sense in which we trust God no matter what. And so if you're coming back to church, what you have to know is there's germs there. There are. We're going to do the best we can to keep it clean. We're going to be responsible. We'll have hand sanitizer. Uh, but just as if when you get on an airplane, even if you're covering your mouth, there's going to be germs. There will be germs here. And so you trust the Lord. And uh, we're not going to be stupid, but we're also not going to live in fear. And so if the Lord, if it makes sense for you to stay home, stay home. If it makes sense for you to come, come. And for all of us, let's accept each other and pray for one another. And uh, we're excited about what God will do. And so thank you for listening. We'll look forward to seeing you in the days ahead. Welcome to Southeast Valley Bible Church Digital Service. We are so glad that you are with us this week. If you have, if this is your first time with us and you'd like to hear more about our church, we have lots of information on our website at sevbc.org and would love to have you go there, check it out. And if you'd like to talk to a pastor, there's a way to do that right on our website. Um, there are a few quick announcements this week. Um, number one is that starting this week, small groups are going to have the option to meet in person. Um, and we're going to have Tuesday night's going to be open to meet. Um, Thursday night's going to be open to meet in person. And then the Tuesday morning is going to meet digitally for now. And then we're going to have the Wednesday night meeting digitally also. So if you were in a digital group and would like to stay in a digital group for the time being, please join the Wednesday night group. And if you are interested in being in a person-on-person -person live group, with that option is available to you also. Also, we're allowing the youth group to meet in person for those that would like to. So please keep that in mind. That's the biggest change. Also, next starting next Sunday, we're going to be gathering together. The option to gather together in person and online is going to be there. I, as I'm sure the pastor just explained to you a little more information about that. Um, but we wanted you to know that is also part of the plan moving forward. We will be giving you more information. Please be flexible. Um, I love a thing that Troy always says is missionary flexible. The idea is that we are willing to change, move, do something different at any moment. So please be aware that over the next few weeks, things are going to look different, be different. Digital service might look or feel a little different. A meeting in person will really feel different. It's going to be okay. We're going to get through it together. I just want to encourage you to just be flexible, be gracious with one another. Know that we are striving by God's grace to make the very best choices 
for our church, for our church family, and for what God has called us to be. So please keep us in prayer continually, as I hope that you're already doing. We want to say thank you to all those that are involved in engaging in one another's lives one-on-one. We are so thankful for our church, just their willingness to get involved in one another's lives. My family has been a huge recipient of that recently. With Katie just giving birth to our third child, the church is overwhelmed and brought us a meal almost every night throughout these weeks that we've needed and we have more than enough food that we could even eat completely so we are so thankful to you and i want to say thank you to you for all the support you've given to us and just i know this is the heartbeat of our church and i'm so thankful for that um please continue to give um as always continue to give if you have a burden to give this rest of ministry by all means continue to do that he will continue to use those funds the additional funds to feed those villages are the people that they can feed. And then please continue to give to our church and just to continue to meet the needs that we are responsible for here. Uh, we're just so glad you're with us today. Enjoy the rest of the service. Our corporate scripture reading this morning is from Psalm chapter 65. We'll be reading the whole Psalm, verses 1 through 13. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. And to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who by his strength established the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the peoples, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. You visit the earth and water it. You greatly enrich it. The river of God is full of water. You provide for their grain, for so you have prepared it. You water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers, and blessing its growth. You crown the year with your bounty. Your wagon tracks overflow with abundance. The pastures of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. The valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. This is the word of the Lord. Let's go together in prayer. Lord, we come before you this morning. We are just so thankful for who you are. We're so thankful for how much you love us, how you care for us, how you watch over us. We're so thankful that you have called us to be your children, that we are overwhelmed and should be overwhelmed with joy and just an abundance of just awness of who you are and how good you are and how thankful we are for you and what you've done for us and are doing for us and are working our lives on a daily basis at moment by moment even and lord we're just so thankful for that as we come to you this morning lord i want to specifically come to you and ask you that you give us wisdom and discernment and And Lord, I pray you give us grace with one another as we come to this season of starting to reopening church and and coming back together, that we would use this opportunity to show love to one another, to show grace to one another, to be striving to be in unity with one another, that we would not look down upon a brother or sister who is or is not with us, that we would not think that we are the stronger Christian in the room compared to someone else, but that we would trust you that you are working in the lives of all of us that you are making each of us more like you and that that looks different in each of us lord i just pray that we would as a church like lean into that truth that you are at work and that this season that you have brought us through and are bringing us through is a season for the church to grow that for christians to grow in their relationship with you to lean into you even more even greater than they did yesterday and lord i just pray that as a church that we would do that as a whole that we'd be a church that leans into you during this season that wants you to work and work in our lives and work in the lives of others around us and lord i think of other churches who are 
been who are reopening up um, this week or next week and are having to work through some of those same struggles uh, of what does church look like and what should it look like how do we accommodate how do we care for our body the way you've asked us to care for our body and so lord i just pray that for those churches that that love you and preach the gospel that you would give them wisdom and grace and and just an understanding of what those steps should look like for their body for their church and i pray that as a church our church, that we would pray for them, that we would love them, that we would be excited for them. And Lord, I just pray that you'd be with us, be with our church, be with our ministry. I pray you would grow us and work and that we would see you use this in such amazing ways that right now we can't even imagine. We thank you for who you are. We thank you that we can trust you. And we thank you that you have it all under your control and that nothing surprises you. In your precious and holy name, amen. The next three songs that we're going to sing in our worship service, we're going to start with The Perfect Wisdom of Our God. It's a beautiful song that exults in God's ability to know what's up. God is completely in control and we can trust him with our prayers and our desires. God's already demonstrated his wisdom in sending his son Jesus to live and die for us. Then we're going to transition to our song of the month, Ancient of Days, again exulting in God's sovereignty, and then moving out of singing about God's sovereignty, we're going to move to trusting Him. We're going to sing, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Sing along as we sing the perfect wisdom of our God. The perfect wisdom of our God revealed in all the universe. All things created by His hand and held together at His command. He knows the mysteries of the seas, the secrets of the stars are His. He guides the planets on their way and turns the earth His Spirit teaching and guiding me. And know oh, the mystery of the cross, that Christ should suffer for the lost, so that the fool might shame the wise, and all the Strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry of grace. So through the trials I choose to say your perfect will in your perfect way. He strand of sorrow has a place within this tapestry. Of grace. So through the trials I choose to say, Your perfect will in your perfect way. The Catechism of the Month is adapted from the Heidelberg Catechism and it's question 27. What is the providence of God? And the answer is, 
God's providence is his almighty and ever-present power by which he upholds heaven and earth and all creatures and so governs them that all things come to us not by chance but by his fatherly hand. Watch 
Well, good morning. It's uh, great to have you with us which, with, for what we believe will be our last, uh, unless the Lord does something unusual. Um, this is uh, our last video sermon. Um, 
And so next week we are planning, as we as you've already heard, next week we're planning on being back at church. We're excited about that, and we're hopeful that many of you will be able to join us. Let me just say that if there are those of you that are concerned about that, it's, it's too soon for you. Uh, we certainly understand that. We appreciate that. We'll be giving instructions on how those of you that are not with us can continue to be with us for both Sunday school and the morning worship service, the preaching service. We'll give you the information on that. And so um, uh, how exciting for us to soon be able to be all, all be to, to be together. Let's turn over to 1 John chapter 5. 1 John chapter 5. And uh, this week we are on part 15 of our 1 John series. Uh, last week we took a week off for Mother's Day. And uh, we're excited to be able to see the mom soon. Uh, and dads and the kids. Uh, grandma and gra- grandmas and grandpas. But... Uh, today we're moving back to 1 John chapter 5, and we're going to pick up in the verse that we left off week before last, and that is 1 John chapter 5 in verse 13. This morning uh, we're going from 1 John chapter 5 verse 13 to verse 15. We're covering three verses. And, uh, and so this morning the sermon title is Confidence in Salvation and Confidence in Prayer. Confidence in Salvation and Confidence in Prayer. And prayer. This morning we read from the Wycliffe Bible Translation. Wycliffe Bible Translation. This was the first English translation uh, during the Middle English period. It's a beautiful translation. Wycliffe did a fantastic job. And, uh, and so this morning uh, I thought it would be good for us. We talked about just recently, we talked about a variety of good translations of the uh, English translations of the Word of God. Uh, we talked about the, prom- the prominence that the King James held for many years, but there were fantastic translations both before and after, and Wycliffe is one of those. We'll say more about Wycliffe here in just a minute. Notice 1 John chapter 5, verse 13. I write to you these things that ye know that ye have eternal life, which believe in the name of God's Son. And this is the trust which we have to God. And this is the trust that we have in God, that whatever thing we ask after his will, he shall hear us. And we know that he heareth us, whatever thing we ask, we know that we have the askings that we ask of him. <laughs> I love, uh, I love uh, that translation that Wycliffe does when he talks in the last verse, uh, we know that we have the askings. I think some of the other translations might uh, translate that as petitions. Uh, God hears those petitions. And so this morning we're reading from the John Wycliffe translation. Wycliffe had been dead 44 years when the Roman Catholic Church ordered to have Wycliffe's bones um, exhumed and burned about the same time they executed uh, Huss and uh and so uh, they were so concerned about the impact of Wycliffe that they actually dug up his bones and they burned them. Well, uh, the church historian said they made a serious error because they sprinkled the ashes in the nearby river, which flowed throughout the known world and uh, took the message of the Protestant Reformation. And uh, uh, the Protestant Reformation grew to be about 100 times more impactful than even Wycliffe, as Wycliffe was impactful enough. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so John Wycliffe, what a great man of God. Wycliffe is something of a hero for me personally. He was called the Morning Star of the Reformation. As a young scholar at Oxford University in philosophy and theology, Wycliffe began to challenge uh, many of the anti biblical beliefs and practice that he saw. Uh, first of all, with the Pope of the Roman Catholic Church, but then also some of the high English church official, officials in England. At that point in time, uh, the Roman Catholicism was the official state religion for England. And so Wycliffe began to take those on, he, just like Luther would eventually um, uh, uh, sometime later. And so Wycliffe began to take on some of these uh, twisted practices. Uh, Wycliffe preached the script, the scriptures were sufficient for faith and practice. Um, 
Wycliffe began to attack transubstantiation. His view of the Lord's table was um, not too terribly different from Luther, who believed in consubstantiation, but he felt that uh, transubstantiation was a twisting of the intended teaching of Scripture on the Lord's table. He believed the Bible should be translated into the common language, so he translated uh, primarily from the Latin Vulgate or the Latin Bible into Middle English in 13. 82. And the Catholic Church, when it would persecute the followers of Wycliffe, who were called Lollards, the Lollards began to spread everywhere, began to preach a, uh, a true biblical gospel. They went as far as Bohemia, that's uh, the modern-day Czech Republic, and uh, John Huss, as we said earlier, Huss came to faith, was an instrumental leader in his own right, and both um, Huss and Wycliffe were executed for their faith, martyred for their faith. And it's interesting, oftentimes when the Catholic Church would burn Protestants, they would, they would hang a copy of the Wycliffe Bible around their necks as they would light the flames and extinguish the life of uh, these true believers. And so this morning we are thankful for John Wycliffe. Well, let's turn our attention to this passage in 1 John chapter, in 1 John chapter 5 as we look at these three verses, we see John bringing together uh, great assurance and great confidence in both salvation as well as prayer. So I want us to think about that. Uh, there is a there is a one-to-one -one benefit. There is a relationship between having a growing confidence in our salvation that is to say, as the Lord allows us to have a growing sense that indeed we are God's children, uh, we bear the marks of re repentance, we bear the marks of faith, the Spirit of God uh, demonstrates that we are truly His children. As that grows, as we continue to grow in our confidence towards in salvation, as we see in verse 13, verse 14 and 15, uh, that has a direct bearing on our growing in confidence in prayer. And so let me let's reverse that as we um, have a as we have a more vibrant confidence in prayer. What's what's one of the uh, main results of that? We have a growing confidence in our salvation. And so John uh, places these two together in uh, these three verses. And I think that's um, I think that's very important to note that when you and I are uh, growing in the Lord and we're walking with the Lord and we're experiencing his presence that has a direct bearing on our confidence and it, as we have confidence in our faith in confidence in prayer that transforms how you and I live uh, that encourages us to be faithful in God's house that encourages us to uh, put off the old man uh, that encourages us in our uh, flight away from the world, the flesh, and the devil. And so I think this is, this is a uh, powerful syllogism. Notice, bottom of page one in your notes, and we have notes this week. Thank you for your patience. I'm sorry we didn't have notes last week, but we have notes this week. Notice, the bottom of page one, we talk about the syllogism. Again, when we have high confidence in faith, that results in a high confidence in prayer. Uh, one of the best books I've read on prayer was written by E.M. Bounds. Bounds noted a generation ago, actually maybe two generations ago, but some time ago, Bounds, during his earthly ministry, Bounds noted that the church needs today, what the church needs today is not more machinery. Now again, this is, this is written uh, probably near 100 years ago. Uh, what the church needs today is not more machinery or better, not new organizations or more novel methods, but men whom the Holy Ghost can use, men of prayer, men mighty in prayer. Uh, Bounds went on to say, I think in a different book, uh, this is directed to fellow pastors of his generation. He says this concerning his pastor friends, prayer is the first thing, the second thing, the third thing necessary to a minister. Pray, then my dear brother, pray, pray, pray. I think all of us would admit if there is a discipline, if there is a spiritual discipline that it's easy to begin to struggle with, is this issue of prayer. 
Here John is reminding us, and Ian Bounds and other authors remind us, of the, the absolute necessity for us to be able to have confidence in the Lord and strength for daily living is connected to this, this practice of prayer. Some other statements from church history. Um, even non-believers sometimes recognize uh, the power of prayer of God's people. Mary, Queen of Scotland, she's sometimes called Mary, Queen of Scots, said this, I fear John Knox's prayer more than an army of 10,000 men, and she should know. She was on the, she was on the, the receiving negative end of armies. And, and as, as difficult as, as, as that was for her, um, especially in her struggle with uh, the Mary of England, uh, she said that she was more concerned about the prayers of John Knox. Great Puritan leader Thomas Watson said this, The angel fetched Peter out of prison. But it was prayer that fetched the angel. (laughs) Luther said, when I cannot pray, I always sing. Well, um, I think as we consider uh, this discipline of prayer this morning, I think we're going to find that these three verses have real application uh, for us as we Uh, consider how this applies to each of our lives. Okay, as we come to this passage, um, notice we've got three verses, and so we have three main points, and then we'll have a conclusion. Notice point number one, really flowing out of point number, uh, verse number one, actually verse number 13, is, and you'll notice top of page two in your notes, number one, because of our confidence in Jesus' relationship to the Father. Now that was covered in 1 John 5 verse 9. We saw the relationship between the Father and the Son. So number one, because of our confidence in Jesus' relationship to the Father, and because of our relationship to the Son, that's captured in 1 John 5, verse 11 through 12. Now, those who have life have the Son. And so, so there's a syllogism. Um, because of the relationship between John, uh, the, the, the Son and the Father, and because of the relationship that we have with the Son, we have confidence in the state of our salvation. Notice he says, I, I've written this. Uh, this is uh, my writings or the writings demonstrate that. Now, if you, uh, two points here underneath this, uh, two sub points, A and B in your notes, top of page two. Letter A, if you remember this ability.